and welcome to Invest Gauteng. I am your host, Fifi Peters. Gauteng is well known as the place of gold, appropriate as it is one of the strongest economies in Africa. The province contributes nearly 35% of South Africa's GDP, which is equivalent to around 7.8% of the total GDP in sub-Saharan Africa. It is known as the economic powerhouse province of South Africa. In the previous episode, we looked at Gauteng's transformation over the past 25 years. Today, we delve into Gauteng as an investment destination. Take a look at this. Innovation, sustainable growth and socio-economic development. Three key pillars driving the economy. As the economy grows, so does its potential to attract the right kind of investment. Sound investment increases the ease of doing business, which in turn allows the private sector and entrepreneurship to thrive and creates stronger public-private partnerships. One of the sectors identified by the GGDA for such partnerships for growth is the Industrial Development Zone, or IDZ, a special economic zone established within the eastern corridor of Gauteng around the OR Tambo precinct, supports industrial development with a specific focus on mineral beneficiation and export-oriented value-added industries. One of the many companies that set up shop there is Into Food, CEO Richard Cooper took us on a tour of the new food processing facility, which was launched in April 2019. I think that this is definitely one of the largest fresh food factories in the world. Uh, it's probably, it's arguably the most diverse. I think the range of products that we're going to be producing here is, is very wide. We, we do export over 400 million rand of product to mainly Europe, so we su supply uh, food manufacturers in the UK, we supply Marks & Spencers in the UK, another world-famous retailer. Um, we supply into the Netherlands as well. And we're already flying product out of, of um, ORT. I think like, the big benefit of being in the SEZ is, 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 is that government have come to the party. I think that it's difficult making investments in anywhere in the world, but particularly in South Africa. And I think that to have the support from, from uh, the Hauteng I GIDZ was, was, was critical to our decision making so I think that um, that, was, that was a big tick in the box to start off with. So we've invested ourselves 120 million rand in this facility so far. There will be further investments as, as capacity grows and, and I think that obviously being in the, the SEZ we do get uh, benefits with regards to there are potential tax benefits, there's employment benefits and also um, benefits around exporting. A province like Gauteng it's highly uh, industrialized, um, it's uh, complex, it has got characteristics of the different uh, um, sectors of the economy. So we are focusing on making sure that uh, the whole of the province, uh, in a way, is turned into a special economic zone. Ultimately, we want the economy to grow so that we can also grow the potential of government to uh, collect revenue. A stone's throw away from Into Food, another public-private partnership is TMH Africa. The railway engineering company invested 500 million rand over three to five years in rolling stock manufacturing. This investment is set to increase Africa's rolling stock capacity. At the official launch of the facility, also in April 2019, President of TMH International Hans Schabert welcomed guests from the private and public sector. It's a niche market for the big international competition, but not for us. So we will educate people more and more in education and engineering department. So and we are using Boxburg for Zimbabwe, Angola. At the moment, uh, we have here in Boxburg 130 people. Uh, 10, 15 out of that are engineers. Our perspective is if we get two contracts which we are bidding in to increase by 500 people this year and it's not a dream for us, it's based on real proposals we have given to the market and we will increase our engineering force. So at the end Boxburg is something between 500-600 people working here in this region and this is our commitment uh, to the government. Another big and prominent public-private investment is the Haar train. This multi-million rand public transport operation covers a big portion of Gauteng and is led by CEO Jack van Merwe. The project is 27 billion rand, so that was that would be what's been invested in the project and the, the capital cost, 
and uh, we will invest another 12 billion um, during the operational period of, of, of the project. So a public-private partnership is a unique way of contracting uh, with the private sector, where traditionally contracts um, are built and then the client takes over the contract and the client runs it. Uh, and then has to provide for the life cycle costing. In the case of the PPP, uh, there's the design, the build, the operation, the main maintenance, and and that. So, so public-private partnership gives you three things. It gives you this life cycle costing. It gives you access to the world's best practice. So you have cons con um, consultants and contractors coming in from all, all over the world that have the knowledge and the experience. And the third thing, it, it gives you access to other capital markets, uh, which is not on the fiscus. During construction, we created 128,000 jobs. So this is actually a magic project for, and especially if you look where South Africa is at the moment, we have to create jobs. Um, during operations, we will have about 10,000 jobs, direct and indirect jobs, that, that, um, that have been created and will be created. Look, how train is how train is something. It's quite a, quite, a, quite an investment at the time. Uh, even though we shot budgets, as is often customary with uh, with investments of this nature, um, I think it's done remarkably to actually connect us and bring affordable sort of uh, uh, travel to co commuters, people who commute daily. I mean, it's quite a it's quite a used service now. Economic stability is a big part of attracting investment and social cohesion is a strong influencing factor. Headlines of social unrest can influence perspectives and weaken investor confidence. What does help ease the level of confidence is the way in which the province owns its challenges and creates assurances. In fact, there's a um, a, a constitutional order, there's peace, uh, there's stability, but also to say to international and also domestic investors that placing your money in South Africa uh, will not be put to waste, you are going to get your returns. That's how we're going to find, uh, fight the, the intractable uh, social conflict in the country, the issues of uh, poverty and, uh, and unemployment will be addressed when we are able to galvanize uh, domestic and international investors to come into these spaces. The kind of uh, SEZs, what we call the multi-tier SEZ, is not public funding. All we do is that uh, we create an enabling environment, create incentives, catalyze this by uh, funding the bulk, but the top structures, the actual manufacturing, the actual operation, operations is, uh, is private sector. Huh? So it's important that we are able to give private sector that confidence. Joining me to further today's discussion is Made Matika, who is the Chief Investment Facilitator for Gauteng IDZ. Made, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. For we having. have seen quite a lot of interest in the province of Gauteng. I remember at the latest Africa Investment Forum, um, Gauteng Premier David Makura had said that a lot of questions were being asked about a couple of projects on the go, the expansion of the Gau train, um, the renewable energy projects. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can tell us about where you are seeing the most activity in the province right now. Thank you for that. Well, certainly there is a lot of activity in the province and as the Premier indicated, a, a lot of work being done to ensure that we deliver on the promise of, of um, you know, supporting the province of Gauteng to grow. Amongst others, the SEZ program that has also been mentioned in the insert, uh, we're working very hard in that regard. Most recently, I think towards the end of last year, um, the Oatambo SEZ program and um, under the Oatambo SEZ program, which started off in Ekuruleni, hence the name Oatambo after Oatambo International Airport, has expanded to include an auto SEZ located in Silverton um, in Tswane. We also have the first part of that particular SEZ sitting inside the airport itself. Again, that one already delivered, as you saw again with the CEO of Interfood, Richard. So yes, a lot of work being done on, on various projects on the go. Uh, to ensure that we deliver on, on those promises of, of supporting the need to unlock the investment and the allowing Gauteng to rise to, to, to the potential that it can be and, and it continues to play in, in the economy of South Africa. For sure, the province, I mean, is growing at a faster pace uh, than the uh, national uh, growth rate right now, but uh, certainly, even though you've got so many projects on the go, you'd like a whole lot more. You are competing for dollar in terms of what other provinces are trying to do, not only here in South Africa, but also on the African continent. So talk to us about where you would like investors to participate 
back their money and what's in store for them if they do choose Gauteng? Well, firstly, what's in store for them is the commitment. Um, and the Houghton Provincial Government is very clear. We, we run a, a business-friendly government. Um, as you saw, again, with the Premier just last year, in addition to the Africa Investment Forum, we, we had the Invest Houghton um, Forum as well, where we brought together not just public uh, sector uh, you know, players, but private sector partners as well, um, who were keen to invest in Gauteng, the likes of Stain City that has come up, for instance. Private sector led, but government very much supporting in that regard. But I imagine that questions often come up about the um, political stability uh, that sometimes doesn't create the most certainty mm. when it comes to investing for foreign investors. What is your message around how the province of Gauteng is addressing that and ensuring that, I mean, should investors choose you, capital is kept safe despite changing policy? Well, there's always a view, I think, that um, uh, there are challenges, and we accept that there are challenges. That's the first one. And I think for any investor out there, if you're sitting with a partner that is not you know, afraid or shying away from having the frank and tough conversations, that, to me, is, is already a, a winning uh, strategy. So that we're uh, prepared to do. To the extent that where there are bottlenecks and that uh, government um, has to step in to unlock those bottlenecks, whether it is getting your EI is approved much quicker or ensuring that we would deliver on the bulk infrastructure much quicker um, we're prepared to have those conversations what is the province's expectations from investors or areas in which you are not willing to negotiate um, even for the toppest of dollar well jobs a very big one um, I think uh, any investor has a plan when they come into a country um, and if they're a domestic investor they also have a plan but what, what we want to see for any investment is that we have that increase in jobs, um, that there is also an opportunity to grow technologies. Now, that's always a two-edged sword because in some instances you introduce technology and then what happens to the jobs. But that's where the skilling comes in. And we also then work very hard to ensure that we allow for reskilling or upskilling, whichever the case may be, so that whatever investments that we end up attracting, we can ensure that there is that growth. And not just in jobs. Um, in ensuring SMME development as well. Because yes, jobs are important, but also of equal importance are the opportunities that would arise from an investment, whether it is through SMME or entrepreneurial support or opportunities that come out of that investment. Well, we are out of time for now, but thank you so much for giving us insights into exactly what the province of Gauteng is doing to lure more investors into its economy. And that is where we leave it for today's discussion. Thanks so much for tuning in. Do make sure that you catch the next episode when we unpack the automotive manufacturing sector. In the meantime, I would like to say thank you to my guest, Maidai Matika, who is the Chief Investment Facilitator for Gauteng IDZ for joining us today. And thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.